Hello, I'm Bradley Frith, Music Instrument Specialist at Amaro Music Store. Today here with Luke Fols to discuss mouthpiece selection. And while we're not going to discuss every mouthpiece that's out there in the market because there are so many, I want to make sure that Luke just discusses some of the qualities of changing from a plastic mouthpiece to a hard rubber mouthpiece and what are some of the benefits of, uh, you know, selecting. So, Luke, go ahead and take it away. All right. So, uh, typically, most students start in their 6th grade, 5th grade, 6th grade, 7th grade years, and that's with a plastic horn. So those beginner horns don't require much in the way of mouthpieces. So most people start on this plastic mouthpiece over here. So there, there are different types of materials for mouthpieces. They can go from metal to hard rubber to wooden even, but then this one right here is plastic. Um, so this is a Yamaha 4C, and that's one of the more common ones that uh, marching band students and more beginner students play on. This is very resistant to uh, what, like weathering conditions, and you, you don't have to worry, it's not that expensive. So you can invest in one of these for an entire, probably four years of high school, or of marching band, kind of keep it clean, make, make sure you do that. Um, but as you move on to more intermediate and professional horns, your mouthpiece is gonna become more and more and more important in how you sound and how, how you start your sound and how you close off your sound. And, but the most important thing to remember when choosing one of these upper level mouthpieces is that there's not one size fits all. The most common recommended mouthpiece is the Van Dorn B45. This has about a medium tip opening, which is the distance between the reed and the mouthpiece when the reed is on the mouthpiece with the ligature, and the, about a medium to long facing. The facing is the part of the mouthpiece where the reed actually sticks on. This is, it goes all the way from the tip down to the base of the mouthpiece. It's a flat part. So each of these mouthpieces has a different tip opening. Because this one's recommended so frequently, many students don't have a, a chance to actually try out the different types of mouthpieces. And while we only have three different uh, manufacturers here, there are several more that we're, we haven't included and several more models of each brand that we haven't included. And that's one of my favorite things is to get students to come into the store and actually get an opportunity to try these mouthpieces out themselves because, you know, assuming that everyone's going to play on the same mouthpieces, uh, you know, there, there's no way that everyone can fit the same thing. Everybody's jaw structure is different, so right. everyone's teeth will dictate a different embouchure and that way that reason you know everyone will sound different on each mouthpiece so yeah gotta gotta choose per uh, who you are not just because someone says that's the one and it's not a cookie cutter right and, you, and so everybody's size. right as you were saying the jaw structure how your lips are shaped when you have big lips uh, your teeth are crooked that might change completely how somebody sounds on the exact same mouthpiece yeah, underbite overbite sound. all that kind of stuff makes a big difference so yeah i've seen that over and again no sorry didn't mean to interrupt it's all good. so that again that's the most important part is finding out what sound you like best and according to your needs so um we have it arranged this way because the tip opening actually gets more narrow so again the tip opening is the distance right at the tip of the reed between the between the tip of the mouthpiece and the tip of the reed. It's uh, the, you're measuring about millimeters, so they're very finite differences. But they're also very finite differences in sound. So this one over here has the more open of these four mouthpieces, and the, as we go progressively more narrow, this is actually under a millimeter in tip opening. This mouthpiece over here is the Bakun musical mouthpiece. This is the uh, London Silas Shavers model, which is actually my teacher. So. This is the one I play on. This is the one I uh, like best. This is the closest tip opening, meaning that less air is required to vibrate the reed at a, at, to, between the opening and closing of the reed against the mouthpiece. While over here, much more air pressure is required to vibrate the reed, and usually about a bigger sound is produced when playing this mouthpiece. However... And that's the Van Doren B45 you're pointing at. Correct. Let's slide, let's slide that uh, Yamaha out of the way since we're talking exclusively... Uh, hard rubber mouthpieces at this stage and again. Right, so... That, that was a plastic. <laughs> yeah, plastic over here, hard rubber over here. So the the reason why it's it's kind of dangerous to say, well, this this tip opening is medium, it's going to best suit all my needs, or this tip opening is closed, that I like the, the response is easier to play, is that in different situations, different players have to meet certain demands. So professionals will choose a mouthpiece that allows them to play best in their setting, whether it's a solo musician, uh, orchestral, or if they're playing in chamber ensembles more commonly. So again, the best, best way to choose, as you said earlier, was get, get in here, 
get, get to Amra Music and try all these <laughs> different mouthpieces. There's so many available and there's so many sounds. You have to pick the best one for you. Great. Hey, Luke, thanks so much for spending time with us today. We'll uh, see you on the next video. You got it.